All right, so we're done with the first item. We'll go on to status updates. Um, does anybody have any status updates relevant to the learning team? I can give a, uh, maybe a, a forward looking statement um, that I've been working on Tecton quite significantly. And um, there's going to be a new Tecton pipeline as opposed to a task that uh, can be a little bit more sophisticated. And my hope um, after it's released, which should be here uh, at the end of February is to create a blog post. So I think that's something that uh, I guess we could look forward to uh, is having a blog post that more or less explains the Tecton integration, how to use it, and hopefully drive us a little bit there more. Okay, any status updates? Okay, cool. Welcome, Sam. I did see your comment. Thank you. Hello. All right. Moving on to user research. Do we have a status update on user user research? No, Natalie or the other Sam aren't here to speak to that. So maybe we'll skip it this time around. Okay, next we have unlabeled issues. You go through those real quick. I believe we have two. I don't know. Um, I believe, yeah, you were the one that added uh, tagging issues. Is that related to what we're about to do right now? I just saw it in the future topics. So this is why I brought this. I have no idea who added it, but it was from last week, I guess. So just added it. Interesting. OK. Um, so for this. Um, I'm hoping you could all see my screen. Uh, so we have two issues and uh, we like to assign a sub team to essentially be uh, the owner of any issues that get added here. So for this, uh, use the build pack new command. This should be for more or less pack or a pack command. So I think the platform team could provide this documentation. Is anybody opposed to that? Sure. In reality, it'll be me, but that's fine. You can put Oh, no. On. Hey, <laughs> if you want to, you know, there you go. Assign Joe. I have a question. Um, should there be like a special label for documentation additions that are probably going to be seen by people that are beginners or maybe it's their first time on the docs? Let, can we add that to the agenda? Because I think yeah. that's a very interesting topic, and we could probably dive into it a little bit further. Yeah. OK, cool. I added learning to that one. Windows build. OK, I feel like this one's an implementation issue. OK, no opposition. Sounds good. All right, that was easy. All right, so the next item in the agenda is tagging issues. Yeah, you said you're not sure what that is really about. Anybody have any ideas? We can get it in the future cool. topics for next week in case someone. We could do a, a blame again and figure out who did it. All right, uh, registry nav button. Yeah, so this is a pull request that adds the registry, a registry link to the nav bar. And I think I'm gonna merge it today, even though we're probably not gonna do the registry launch today. We're just waiting for some people to update their build packs with more metadata um, so that all the build packs actually look good when we launch it. Uh, but I just wanted to, let folks know that it's going in, even though it, like during the soft launch period. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, as I was looking at this PR, um, 
I mean, I definitely didn't stand in the way of it, but I think in the future we might want to look at either collapsing some topics or, or yeah. the search functionality might also help um, in some of that. I think Chocolatey has like a search and it lets you search docs or, you know, in this case, the registry. That might be a thing, but uh, just different things because it does feel like it's starting to get a little cluttered. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think, yeah, I like, I yeah, totally agree. The But the reason I ended up wanting it there is advertising. Like, yeah, I want people, I want people to see it a little bit and then we can collapse it, you know, because it's a new thing. So, cool. All right. You want to talk about the launch blog? Oh, yeah. That's just a link. If you have a chance to review it, uh, please take a look. Just copy editing or whatever. Um, Still not 100% sure what day we'll launch. Maybe Wednesday, but I don't think it'll be today. Okay, cool. All right, on to the next topic, organi uh, organizing concepts. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm um, Sambal. I work at Bloomberg, and I'm trying to introduce build packs as like a new container building mechanism inside the company. Um, uh, so just to give you some background, like um, so far it's been uh, like just me mainly trying to get some infrastructure up and running internally. Um, and like one of the problems we face is because it's it's internal and there's nothing connected to the internet. Um, there are some settings or things that you have to do, which are way different from the typical build pack author's guide or the operator's guide. So when I was first looking through all of this and like looking at concepts to figure out which parts are interacting with what, um, it, it took me quite a while to understand each of the concepts that are listed there in, in, in sort of a DAG fashion. So like, which one do I start with first to understand what comes next? Uh, because currently, if, if you look at the documentation, they all sort of refer to each other. Uh, so it's, it's difficult to pick a starting point where you begin your comprehension of build packs. Um, so I was just wondering if anyone has any thoughts on how to introduce like these concepts to someone who's never heard of build packs, because now I like, now that I've worked with this and I know about it, I can try and explain it to other people, but they still get confused because of the fact that uh, most of the folks here are used to like using Docker files to build their container applications. So they have like it, it's very hard for them to fathom that a container image can possibly use other container images to build yet another container image. Um, and then how all of these things come together and the different uh, like container images that come into play, that's that's very difficult for them to understand. And like concepts like build packs, builders, et cetera, regularly get confused internally. Like when I tried presenting it to people, uh, they were getting confused between what's a build pack, what's a build package, what's a builder, um, and how how they interact with each other. So that was sort of my uh, uh, some some background information on why um, I'm, I, I put that topic in the agenda. Like, has has that been a common issue for new users? Like. Or is it something that I'm facing only because it's internal and then have to I, I had to implement a lot of these things from scratch and understand these concepts in details or is it just like a common thing it, it's it's definitely not just you i'll say that much um i think but i think you articulated pretty well in terms of like um things referencing other things like i, I can imagine like what's a builder i click through and it talks about what's a build pack and then you see a link to a builder and kind of uh feel like you're not getting anywhere um, I wonder, like, like we do have a bunch of things that people need to learn about. And I think as the project matures, some of those things will, I, I think our hope was that some of those things would uh, like go behind the scenes. Like, you know, we definitely hope that builder image would be just an implementation detail at some point. We're not there yet though. Um, similarly with uh, build packages. But I wonder if like one approach to reduce some of like the things you have to learn would be to really lean into 
the like so i know docker file and then here's the progression you know which is like i think we've steered away from that because we we don't want to do we don't want to put too much emphasis on like a one to one comparison with docker file cuz like in, at the end of the day i think people would be left like well so why do i need build packs and it's like oh well it's all the things that you can't compare to docker file that make build packs uh, have like uh, more advantages but maybe that's something that we need if only to start people off i don't know anybody else have thoughts so um i have two thoughts one of them you know in re relation to what you just mentioned i mean is it is it fair to say that maybe our app journey right which is, i think is like our our very like getting started tutorial is like overly simplistic, right? Where it's literally you just run pack build and it just like builds an app image and it doesn't tell you too much about exactly like how the system works. Um, that That's, I guess, one question I have, whether or not that should be a little bit more of bringing, you know, again, kind of with the same vein of maybe acknowledging that pe most people already have a Docker file or Docker, you know, experience. It's like, okay, so this is how you do it here and provide a little bit more context. Yeah, I feel like the, I think probably to your point, the app journey guide is great if you have someone like Sam in your organization who's figuring all this stuff out for you and all you have to do is run pack build. Um, but I think for the majority of people, like, that's uh, like they're, they're probably coming in learning about build packs and trying to understand the whole picture so they can figure out how it fits into their organization or whatever. So, and it, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And then the other, or maybe we could have two, right? Or maybe uh, a different set of examples, uh, maybe more tailored mm -hmm. to very specific use cases. Um, so, that could be a route. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about was. Like, at least for me, I'm very visual, right? And if I look to the components uh, section under concepts, like, yeah, it's like just a whole bunch of stuff, right? Like, literally mm -hmm. descriptions of things. Whereas, uh, at least for like the build operation, right? I'll share the screen real quick. Yeah. So for like the build operation, right? It's it at least gives me something, right? Like it tells me that there's this builder thing. It tells me that there's build packs and a life cycle and a build image. So like this actually like tells me all the components in in at least a higher overview versus looking at something like, you know, the builder does tell me what a builder is, but if I look at the components and how they interact together, like that's missing from this yeah, page. Even, like, yeah. I feel like this page could in, have some diagram. Yeah. I know we've done a lot of presentations that have those sort of diagrams. Yeah, even just some text about, like we have descriptions of each individual thing, but like, yeah, I, I totally agree with diagram, but even just text about how they all come together. Yeah, which we kind of do, but it's like in a the build yeah. sequence, right? Yeah. I yeah, don't know, Sam, if you could provide more so the that's build it. diagram there that's actually what helped me understand the whole thing um mm. so w when you're coming from like outside the build packs world like it's still easy to understand build packs and builders but as soon as you get to something like life cycle or platform you you start like platform is not something people associate with the ci tool or a so cli tool for example uh, so when i tell them that okay pack is a platform um, they're like, what? It, it's, it's just a, it's just a command line tool. How is that a platform? So, um, maybe in that build, like in that build diagram, if we just introduce that the platform is the one that uses all of this and orchestrates it into the image, like that's the only thing missing from the concepts. And then put that in the original components page. Um, I think that would, that could be a good introduction that, um, in, in the build pack world, the platform is simply the underlying orchestrate, like the tool that orchestrates the lifecycle to do X, Y, Z. I, I, I'm pretty sure I at least have a slide in one of the talks I did that kind of tries to specify what a platform is. But uh, yeah, I think something like that would definitely be good here. Yeah. The, 
the other thing which is like in in builders you you talk about build images and run images um but like uh like although run image is there certainly on the right side the run image is certainly gone like so so on the left there's the run image and and then on the right side it's not there so maybe some way to say that it's not part of the builder image but that's what it uses to create the final mm -hmm. like app image or some I, I don't know if we can provide some cue for that like where that run image is actually ending up i see yeah that makes sense cool this is all really good feedback yeah All right, just to offer my couple cents in here, you know, I'm also peruse these docs and I just wanted to highlight a point where like, you know, I feel like all these components, um, you should have given that all right away. And I know for me, it'd be really nice to have like a bird's eye view when, when you do have these kind of things listed out just to see, um, you know, maybe what the most important things to know right away are before, you know, maybe a month later, I don't know, three weeks later, when I want to get into a more granular level, then I can investigate, you know, then I can know what mm -hmm. the life cycle is doing and things like that. Yeah. I feel like that would have helped me, which, which again, it's only because of bill packs, because there's these different abstractions that you sort of are being uh, made aware of right away, right? Yeah, no, I, I get that. It's like, should I read about the life cycle? I don't know. <laughs> And we're kind of presenting people with, here's a bunch of things you might want to read about, but you don't know if you should read about or care about. There is and then some of them are super important. Yeah. I wanted to add yeah. that there is just so much information that um, maybe we should just create like an introduction, like page that's saying, this is like a really high overview. Yeah. And if you care about this, go and read this page. If you care about something else, go and read this page. But it just. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I remember was just that the getting. Yeah. When, when I joined, it just. You're getting so much information from everywhere, so many things to read and see, and it just it it just too much. You're getting lost. Yeah. I think something that may help is like a a step by step tutorial which tackles like the most general use case, which is first most probably people looking to build packs are, are using it to build apps. Like they are the most generic users who need to know the least about all of these concepts. Um they need a high level overview, but they don't need to know everything. Um, then the next stage is the build pack authors who need to know how to create build packs. And finally, it's like some infrastructure owners who need to know, who need to provide like certain stacks for you or who need to provide a platform, like who, who recommend a platform for you to use, whether it's pack or Tekton or Kpack or anything else. So for, for someone creating a new platform, their understanding of concepts have to be very different. They probably need to know about how the life cycle is working for someone creating a builder they probably will just use the life cycle binary or image as is they'll never investigate what's going underneath so that's what an operator's guide would be and then for the build pack author they they don't really care about stacks they just care about like here's the here's the stack that my operators provided me and i'll just write build packs on top of it so I, I, maybe like if we gradually introduce the concepts based on which slice of the infrastructure you own, I think that might help. I do wonder, yeah, like with all that said, right? Um, it's it's all pretty nebulous in my mind, but let me try to see if I can explain it. So I think like the the general getting started here should be like maybe something that we would have done at a presentation, right? Like a, a what is it, KubeCon presentation, but like not the deep dive, but the like very high level overview with some like diagrams or something that really shows like, hey, this is what this is all about, right? And then 
from there, each one of these guides, app developer guides, could maybe have a getting started as well that's very specific to that persona, right? That kind of goes more into like what Sam, you just mentioned. Yeah. But I definitely think it, it'll take a couple iterations to really morph this into a much better, you know, I guess the close to perfect solution. I think this would be um, like there's a, there's a lot of things in this and, and some of them are small like I, I almost wonder just some minor changes would improve this but then I think there's some like big revisit the docs kind of things and I wonder if we should include that in the roadmap for for this year as one of our goals I mean I think we already talked about having some document documentation stuff and like <clears throat> actually blocking releases on documentation and stuff like that, but independently, and especially based on the user research, you know, bringing that in, might want to look at it holistically and really rethink it. Yeah. I definitely think so. I think um, it would align very well with everything else that we're trying to do as far as uh, mm -hmm. growth of the community. And you know, being able now that we have a little bit more of a a solid ground versus before, I think we were just still trying to build everything. Now I think it's the time to maybe focus on this. Yep. Yeah, this is really great feedback, Sam. Thank you for for bringing that to us. Thank you for listening. All right. Yeah. So um, definitely some action items that I'll take from this is uh, add it to the roadmap, right? Or at least discuss it further in the roadmap discussions. And then the ultimate action item would be to have some issues that come out of it to further improve it. So I'll re I'll listen to the recording again and try to jot down notes for everything and uh, kind of throw them into the Slack channel and then maybe we could proceed from there some issues to take on. Cool. All right. Yeah, that'd be um, great. Next topic, first time doc visitor topics. Yeah, I don't really have that much to say except um, I think that some of the the work that we're doing on docs that are probably going to be more visible to people that are first time, maybe first time build pack authors or first time developers might need special attention or they might need to be in a more visible spot in the docs or maybe, um, yeah, they might be need to be somewhere where they are, um, it's kind of easily, easy to sift through them and then also kind of somewhere else where they might be closer to, I guess, their specific concern. Yeah, that makes sense. This came up uh, just, I think yesterday when I was, uh, we were finalizing or you know, putting some finishing touches on the group additions to the Project Tamil RFC. That's where you have like the pre and post build packs. And I think I did create an issue for it, but it's like, it's like an important thing to document for some of our important power users, like like people using the Instana build pack on Google or whatever. But for a first time build pack author, that's like totally extraneous. And you would wanna, you would not wanna bring that kind of thing into the picture at all. Um, so it left me like thinking, ah, oh, where does this even belong? Cause I don't wanna put it in our, like the app developers guide necessarily. Maybe the using project Tomal. But um, yeah, I think that's the kind of thing you're talking about. Yeah. Would it be, just thinking from an organizational standpoint, would it be like 
per page or per topic, like, you know, heading? Um, probably per topic. Because if we were to think of like just that example that you just brought up, Joe, if we look at using Project Tamil, like I think a lot of our current documentation is uh, geared towards, you know, a uh, a page in regards to a you know context or subject, right? And then um, I don't know yeah, if we want to break away from right, that, right. right? What's up? Yeah, like a single page, I think is the key thing there, right? Yeah. So like there's using Project Tamil, and it assumes that this page is sufficient for anyone using Project Tamil. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah. And then we're inside of this page or, you know, however you want to like break it down, right? Like we probably mm -hmm. want to have those smaller snippets or blocks where they're independent of the entire content and just say, okay, this is how you use pre and post. And then maybe marking those as some sort of, I think I've seen it in other documentation, right? Like whether it's an advanced topic or a beginner topic mm. and making that readily available. I don't know if that's what this, you know, this is exactly what we're thinking about, but that's what came to my mind. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to drop off. Um, I think we should sort of fold what Danielle brought up into that larger discussion about what we put on the roadmap for rethinking the docs. I think I think they're, I think it's very much related to what Sam was bringing up, and that it's just like, in that we should be cognizant of being hostile towards people that are just getting started, but then also try to accommodate people that are looking for like, oh, how do I do this more advanced thing, but not necessarily entangle them. That makes sense. So yeah, I'll definitely yeah, I'll definitely own making sure that gets into the roadmap, but we should also look at creating some more tactical issues on the repo. Oh. Yeah, we didn't get to get to our last one, migrating missing specs to the doc. Uh, is that okay if we add that to the next meeting? I approve. Sounds good. All right. See you all. Thank you so much.